Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is my Edexcel IGCC Series 2, number 17, Inequalities. Let's get it. Okay, n is an integer, which means a whole number. Write down all the values of n that satisfy this inequality. So this means that n is in between minus 2 and 3. It can equal minus 2, but it cannot equal 3. So if we go through the numbers, it can equal minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Ah, can't equal 3, so that's where we must stop. Let's get rid of you. And those are the integers that it can equal. Right uh, on the number line, represent inequality y is less than or equal to 1. So we put a circle at 1 because it's right there, it's 1. And less than means that they're all the numbers that are smaller than them, which are to the left of the number line. And because it says it can equal 1, we shade in this um, circle. If it was a strict inequality, which means that it can't equal 1, then we do not shade in the circle. Okay. Aha. Now this one is a bounded inequality. It's in between minus 2 and 1. So we draw a circle at minus 2 and a circle at 1. And we draw a line just connecting them because it's bounded in between. But because minus 2 it can equal, we shade that one in. And that is done. Write down all... Oh, so n is an integer. Write down all the values of n that satisfy this. Okay. So um, it's in between minus 3.5 and, and 2. Not minus 3.5, minus 3.4. So going up from minus 3.4, the next integer we hit is minus 3. So that's all good. It could be in there. It could be that one. Uh, minus 2, it could be that one. Minus 1, it could be that one. 0, it could be that one. 1, it could be that one. 2, it could be as well because it says that it is equal to 2 or possibly equal to 2. Any more, that will be out of the range. So that is all good. Aha, solve this inequality. Okay, so we're going to solve this just like we do an equation. In fact, we can almost just imagine that sign there being an equation sign. But we will keep it as a less than or equal to sign. So we have 5x, uh, and the first thing I want to do is plus 7 to both sides. Uh, so that way, the minus 7 and the plus 7 cancel out there, leaving me with just 5x on the left. On the right, 2 plus 7 is 9, so it's 5x is less than or equal to 9. And then what we're going to do is we're going to want to divide both sides by 5 to isolate the x. So I get x is less than or equal to 9 over 5. And you can leave it as a fraction or decimal, however you choose fractions are fine with me. Same thing, uh, to solve this equation, or inequality should I say, I would subtract 5 from both sides. That will then cancel the plus 5 and the minus 5. And that will leave me with 4y on the left, greater than 12 minus 5 is 7. And then we can divide both sides by 4. So that gives me y, and that is greater than 7 over 4. Beautiful. Aha! It's a tricky one. Two ways of solving it. And in fact, I will do both methods, and you can decide which one is for you. Method one is we just divide through by a negative. So dividing by a negative will change the sign of all of the terms. So minus 3, so 3 turns to minus 3. Minus 4x turns to plus 4x. And dividing by a negative flips the sign over. And 11 becomes minus 11. Now we can add 3 to both sides, which will cancel the minus 3 and, uh, and the plus 3 there. That will leave me with 4x. And then we have minus 11 plus 3 is a minus 8. Divide through by 4 gives me x is greater than or equal to minus 2. That's method 1. 
Method two is just moving that 4x to the other side and that will turn it positive and we don't need to worry about any flipping of signs. So adding the 4x to both sides, uh, let me just do that uh, clearly. So I'll write it out like this. I will add 4x to both sides as this will cancel the minus 4x and the plus 4x will go. That will leave me with 3 is less than or equal to 11 plus 4x. I'm then going to subtract the 11 from both sides. So 11 and minus 11 will go. This will leave me with 4x. Uh, 3 minus 11 is minus 8. Divide through by 4 gives me minus 2 is less than or equal to x. And if we wanted to, we could write it the other way around x is greater than or equal to minus 2. I was starting to like method 1 actually. I was always a method 2 guy but method 1 just seemed quite good. Okay, ha! Huh. Nah, this one's not as tricky actually because you could just plus the, the free q over um, and that will give me, uh, although these will cancel, and that will give me 5q on this side is greater than or equal to 31. And then just dividing through by 5 gives me 31 over 5. So that's definitely the best way to do that one. Again, another, this is an integer. So minus 2 it can be. Minus 1, 0, 1, 2. It can't be 3, so we stop there. This one, we always move the smallest x term, or in this case t term, first. So I'm going to subtract 2t from both sides. That's going to cancel these two, and that's going to leave me with 5t over there. Minus 8 is less than 7. I can then add 8 to both sides uh, to, to get my t on its own. So that gives me 5t less than 15. And then finally, we can divide through both sides by 5 to get t is less than 3. And then represent it on a number line. Well, we put a circle at 3. We draw a line to the left because it says less than and all the numbers to the left are less than. And we don't shade it in because it can't equal 3. Some people put it at 2 because they know it can't equal 3. That would be wrong because that would miss out all of the um, decimal numbers in between 2 and 3. So we have to put the circle exactly where that number is. Okay. This one, we divide everything by 2, and that will give me it in terms of y. Just divide every term by 2. And now it says work out the possibilities. Well, it could be minus 2, could be minus 1, could be 0, could be 1, could be 2. Can't be 3. Okay, this one, again, I'm going to move the smallest... Um, in this case, t term. So I'm going to subtract 2t from both sides. Cancel, cancel. Gives me 5t minus 3 is less than or equal to 31. Add the 3 to both sides. Gives me 5t is less than or equal to 34. Divide through by 5. It's going to give me t is less than or equal to 34 over 5. Beautiful. Okay, um, probably the trickiest one because we've got a bit going on here. But when we've got this like um, bounded, we've got x in the middle, numbers on the side. We just do it to all three kind of sides of the inequality. So the first thing I'd do would be to add three to all three sides. Minus seven plus three is minus four. These will cancel, so leave me with just two x, and this will give me eight. And now I can divide every uh, side by 2 to get me a single x. So minus 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4. And that is a lovely three marks. And it says represent it on the, on the number line. Don't mind if I do. So 0, I mean, I put, uh, zero, I put a circle at minus 2, because that number is minus 2. And I put a circle at 4. I connect them up with a straight line, and then I check, are any of them possibly equal to? Well, yes, the minus two is, so that one needs to be shaded.
And that is a wrap, I believe. Yes, it is. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye for now.